Hello everyone, this is Senior Biotech Analyst John Vandermosten. Welcome to our channel that educates the life sciences investor on exciting advancements in drugs, biologics, and devices. For more content and news like this, subscribe to our channel below and like or share with others. I've got Reviva Pharmaceutical CEO, Dr. Laxman Orion Bott here with me today in the studio, uh, and he's going to discuss the future of the company and some of the other projects that they're working on. Uh, Brilleroxazine has been cleared to begin phase two trials and at least four other indications besides their primary indication in schizophrenia. Money's been tight in the biotech space over the last year and a half, but with your progress so far, uh, you've been attracting investors, which may provide support uh, to expand in some of these adjacent indications that, that um, we're going to talk about. Uh, what are some of the other disorders that you want to go after and why is Brilleroxazine a good fit for them? Sure. You know, First of all, schizophrenia is not a single uh, disease, as I mentioned before. Uh, you know, uh, drugs, uh, especially in the uh, secondary endpoints, what we evaluate, that could be a predictor for extending the therapeutic benefits to other indications in the neuropsychiatric space, uh, like a major depressive disorder, bipolar, and then even ADHD. Mm -hmm. So we believe our drug, based on the secondary endpoints generated in the phase two study, and then endpoints we are evaluating in the phase three study. So we believe this could be extended for, uh, readily extended for other indications. So certainly we would like to explore that one after the phase three top line data when we receive. And then besides that, other opportunities in the neuropsychiatric space is to go for uh, different uh, delivery options such as a, uh, you know, uh, uh, injectables, that is a maybe- Long a, acting. Long acting. Yeah. And yeah. then also there are a variety of other uh, transdermal and other options uh, for depending upon the patient population, it may have some benefits to like uh, elderly patients and children, different formulations we can explore. But the bottom line is a, extending the therapeutic benefits to other indications, that's an opportunity for this drug. And I think you also have listed on your on your pipeline pulmonary arterial hypertension is, and some other areas that are kind of outside the psychiatric area. Correct. That, that, is, a, that is another opportunity uh, for us. The reason for that is a, if you look at a, uh, all the clinical literature, ma, you know, ma, majority of uh, psychiatric patients, they do have, uh, you know, uh, some uh, immune-related uh, uh, abnormalities, mm -hmm. uh, the diseases such as a, a skin disease or a uh, pulmonary indications. So, based on the clinical literature, such as a you know significant number of uh, PAH patients, uh, pulmonary fibrosis patients, and then some of the skin disease patients have uh, you know uh, psychotic symptoms, whether mm -hmm. it is a clinical depression or a schizophrenia, or in other words, you can combined together psychiatric disturbances. So what we know so far, based on the current literature, psychiatric sim symptoms, uh, as, uh, patients have immune system abnormalities. So our drug, based on the data generated to date, consistently in all the translational studies showed reduction in variety of cytokines. We already published a couple of papers, it's on our website. Mm -hmm. So based on the data generated to date, we believe FDA has already granted uh, uh, orphan indications for uh, our drug bilaroxazine for PH, mm -hmm. pulmonary arterial hypertension, and pulmonary fibrosis. So we believe the similar indications where we see immune system related uh, abnormalities, related uh, diseases, uh, plus the patients also showed psychiatric symptoms. We would like to extend our, the benefit of our drug to those indications, patients with uh, suffering from those indications. Again, at this time, it is not very clear whether this drug could be treated those, uh, in those patients as a monotherapy or an adjunct therapy. At this time, it is not clear. But so far, the data generated today, non-clinical data, mm -hmm. it clearly supports the extending uh, this drug treatment to these uh, patients with immune abnormalities. Mm -hmm. And you know, to, to support these programs, you're going to need additional funding or partnerships, correct, correct. or you know. And I think we may have heard from you that there might be some non-dilutive funding opportunities, or or the partnerships uh, for advancing some of the other proposed programs. What what's going on in that in that respect? Yeah, you know, at currently our focus is to complete the ongoing phase three study because that is the major uh, value driver for our uh, uh, company and then shareholders. Uh, but uh, uh, 
in parallel, we are also pursuing uh, uh, potential non-dilutive uh, 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 funding to come through, uh, the, such as a, you know partnering, mm -hmm. whether global partnering or regional partnering. And uh, currently, there are companies uh, uh, reviewing the data. We are also exploring uh, non-dilutive funding potential uh, uh, grant uh, opportunities for some of these programs because say, like uh, orphan indications, PAH and then IPF, uh, in fact, in the neuropsychiatric conditions as well. So they qualify for uh, grants and then uh, we are exploring. So we are very optimistic of bringing uh, non-dilutive funding uh, in 2023. Okay, well that's great. Yeah, one of the benefits of a broad pipeline Correct. is that you have access to more grants like that. And then, you know, you, you also mentioned your primary focus is on uh, Berla Rock's design in, in schizophrenia. Uh, what about commercialization outside the United States? Is that um, w w is that something that you pursue, or will you pursue that along with you know some global type of deal? What do you, how do you think that'll eventually turn out? Sure, you know, first of all, our uh, clinical development it's a it's a it meets the global regulatory requirement, and then with respect to commercialization, we as a public company, uh, you know, we are prepared to uh, commercialize ourselves as well as we keep the option open for, uh, 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 you know, uh, commercialize this one through global partners as well, uh, or regional partners. So at the end, of, uh, you know, the goal is to commercialize this product. And uh, uh, if we go with the potential partners, this should be a very attractive deal for us. Otherwise, mm -hmm. as a public company, uh, we have the ability to raise money and then support this one commercialization ourselves. So okay. as long as we generate good data, that market will respond according to the you know uh, market cap should go up. That's our expectation. So the commercialization, uh, we don't see any problem. We have uh, the experienced team. I myself in the past associated uh, in this process. Uh, you know, uh, our team is very well experienced to uh, commercialize ourselves as well. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Bot. Great you. to have a conversation with you about the future of uh, Reviva. Uh, again, we've had uh, Dr. Laxmanarayan Bot, the CEO of Reviva Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol RVPH. For more information about the company, see uh, our links below for some links to uh, reports and also other conversations that we've had with Dr. Bot. Thank you. Thank you.